So, not as many movies came out in 2020 as usual, and as a result, not as many pointless movies came out in 2020. It probably doesn't help that one of this year's movies I accidentally put on last year's list. We'll get to it. I still don't think this was an exhaustive list. There's definitely other stuff I could talk about. But I don't think it's a problem if I limit the number from 10 to 5, given how few movies actually came out this year. So, here's the top 5 most pointless movies of 2020. Number 5, Downhill. First off, do not call your movie Downhill unless you want me to make jokes like... Must be a movie about Will Ferrell's career, ayo! But seriously, what happened to Will Ferrell? I'm starting to doubt he was ever funny. Like, I like Elf and Talladega Nights as much as the next guy, but let's be real. He's always been pumping out shit like this on the side. It's just become the only thing he does lately. Worse yet, this film is an adaptation of the Swedish film Force Majeure. Now, I didn't actually like Force Majeure that much. I thought it was kind of slow and boring, but I seem to be in the minority there because it reviewed really well. And it is one thing a Will Ferrell comedy will never be. Subtle. I don't even like the movie and I think this is disrespectful. I point the finger squarely at The Departed. To date, it is the only American adaptation of a foreign film that is better than the original. Now, a couple of those J-horror adaptations were okay, but none of them beat the original. I think a lot of companies are just holding on to the hope The Departed gave them. Or they're money-grubbing bastards who don't think the masses are smart enough for foreign films. And like the old saying goes, no one ever went broke underestimating the intelligence of the American public. Number four, Artemis Fowl. Oh boy, are we still doing film adaptations of YA fantasy novels? Maybe this shit would have flown alongside stuff like Aragon or Percy Jackson, but it's 2020. That ship has sailed. We already know all of these films suck. Did anyone have high hopes for this? Even if you love the book, you must have seen the writing on the wall. I'm given to understand this is a property Disney bought back when those movies were hot and never managed to get a movie out before now, but that almost seems worse. We don't care, do something or we've wasted our money. At least we got that funny Josh Gad meme. Number 3, The Grudge. Oh man, speaking of American adaptations of J-horror, I'll admit, I haven't seen either version of The Grudge, but I do know Ring's fucking tanked. So why are we re-remaking another J-horror film? See, the advantage of doing a list like this in 2020 is that all the really egregious stuff comes out in January, before the pandemic hit. I can't explain it, but studios just dump horror movies and kids movies they don't care about in January. I think it's because there's usually some big year-end blockbuster around Christmas. For a while it was Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter, lately it's been Star Wars. Plus, December and January is when the Oscar contenders come out and studios want you to focus on that. I don't know though, whatever it is, January is when the bad movies get dumped, so I can populate this video with movies released then. Anyways, there's no reason to remake The Grudge, there's already two very serviceable versions of it. Fuck off with this shit. Number two, Doolittle. The new Animaniacs has a song about stuff getting remade and rebooted, and it got me thinking about all the stuff that's been remade or rebooted twice since Animaniacs went off the air in 1998. Lost in Space is cutting it close, but it happened. Ocean's Eleven, The Mummy, Carrie, The Grinch, Godzilla, and King Kong. Arguably Halloween and Shaft, and I think Charlie's Angels reigns supreme with not just two, but three remakes since 1998. And that's without counting superheroes, which are too many to count. And one more for the list is goddamn Dr. Doolittle. And this one doesn't even make much sense to me. Clearly the Eddie Murphy Doolittle is the one people are going to be familiar with. How many people are even aware of the 1967 original? But this new film looks like it's sticking much closer to the original. Why? For what purpose? 
This is just a cash grab, right? Go for the one people will recognize. Not that I think the Eddie Murphy one is a particularly hot property. Frankly, I don't think anyone's clamoring for more Dr. Doolittle. It's the type of thing that's confusing all the way around, and that's exactly what warrants it a place on this list. And now for my single honorable mention, Trolls World Tour. I put this on the 2019 list, and it didn't come out till 2020. Now in my defense, it was scheduled to come out in 2019, and DreamWorks pushed it back. But they're happy with that decision. Uh, I just didn't get the news until I'd already made my video. I kinda hate even bringing it up twice. Like I said last year, I think the sequel has way more of a reason to exist than the first film. The first film was cashing in on a fad from the 90s. This is cashing in on a currently popular movie. It's perfectly reasonable for Trolls World Tour to exist. Also, on a bit of a dare, I watched the first Trolls movie, and let me tell you, it's a fucking trip. So, I might end up watching Trolls World Tour. I, I just wanted to bring up an error I made in the 2019 list. My bad, y'all. Moving on to number one. And shocking absolutely no one, the most pointless movie of the year is Mulan. What do I even say? It's another damn Disney remake. Rather than retread old ground, I would like to use this time to get on my soapbox about shit like Disney+. Plus. Way back when, studios owned all the theater chains, forcing independent theater chains out of business and crushing independent movies. Eventually, this was deemed too much of a monopoly, and in 1948, United States vs. Paramount Pictures declared that studios could no longer own theater chains. But now, theater chains are dying, and people are getting most of their entertainment from streaming services. With separately owned streaming services like Netflix and Amazon Prime, and especially smaller platforms like Shudder or the Criterion Channel, there's always been a place at the table for independent films. But if we let shit like Disney Plus and HBO Max take over, pretty soon we're gonna be paying the five corporations that control 90% of America's media for content, and original, independent cinema will shrivel up and die. Disney Plus is destroying art. Happy 2021.